Man, nothing is better. It's a brand new year, a brand new backdrop, and now I've got a brand new editing laptop to test out that's hopefully faster than my last one. I have no idea what it is about setting up a new editing laptop, but it's like a fresh start for a creator. So a filmmaking friend of mine the other day bought a $50,000 RED camera, an 8K Raptor and told me about this laptop that was less than $2,000 that he was able to edit the footage on. Anyone who has ever tried to edit 8K raw footage on a laptop, wow, this is, this is really nice. Moment of truth, ooh. Oh, oh wow, it's already turned on. I'll just go ahead and get this plugged in for our testing today, but why do I even need a new editing laptop? Well, like 50% of my job is sitting around editing or waiting for the videos to render. So about once a year, I get a brand new top of the line editing laptop to hopefully make my workflow a little faster and make all the work I have to do through the year a little easier. A couple weeks ago, my channel actually started getting sponsored by Dell, so I thought it was a great opportunity to ask them to send me the brand new XPS so that I could try to beat the crap out of it and see how it holds up. The laptop that I was using right before this takes about 45 minutes to export one of my 20 minute YouTube videos. So I'm hoping this one can pretty much cut that time in half, to be honest. So before we get into the actual hardcore testing of this laptop, for the tech geeks out there, this laptop has an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 Ti graphics card, an 11th generation Intel Core i7 processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 3.5K OLED touch display. This thing is like razor thin and it's got an SD card slot, a couple USB-C slots and a headphone jack. Pretty much everything I needed along with a freaking crazy graphics card, especially for a laptop that's coming in under $2,000 at the time of making this video. So it's just time that we beat the absolute crap out of this. We are going to test my 4K YouTube video workflow that I do every single week, 6K raw video workflow, 8K Red Raw video workflow. Then we're also gonna move into photo batch exporting. We're also gonna take on 3D rendering, Cinema 4D, and the absolute destroyer of computers, After Effects. And just so you actually have a frame of reference against the computer you're using, all of the tests and footage that we use in today's video will be right down below in the description so that you can run the same test and see how your laptop holds up and if you're in need of an upgrade as well. One last thing we're gonna do before we start testing is just make sure all of the NVIDIA Studio drivers are up to date. You always wanna make sure all of your drivers are up to date. The GPU optimized driver packages can be a game changer for creative work as the RTX Accelerator 70 plus of the most popular creative applications, improves their stability, and can even power AI accelerated workflows in some NVIDIA developed apps. The first test we're gonna be doing, we're gonna import a thousand photos to Lightroom. We are gonna drop a preset on all 1,000 of them, and then we're gonna click export and see how long it takes. This is the process I have to go through every time I wanna make a real time lapse. My previous computer it took like 30, 35 minutes. If we could cut that time in half, it would be incredible. Anything faster than that is just, it's ridiculous, but I'll take it regardless. This is 1,000 photos. Go ahead and set those to import. All right, it's done. That was literally four seconds. Uh, they're all imported. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take my black and white Leica preset. So then we're gonna literally just hold shift and select all 1,000 photos and click sync. Five seconds later, Every photo we have is now in black and white. So now with those thousand images selected, we're gonna to go to export. Countdown in three, two, one. It's exporting. This is going, I'm gonna get a coffee. All right, let's see how we're looking. We are at 15 minutes and 14 seconds and our task is complete. We have exported 1000 raw photos from a 1DX in 15 minutes up from 35 minutes on my previous device this is going well all right well uh, then let's jump straight into our second test so this next test is kind of the big one for me and my purposes we're going to try exporting one of my fully produced YouTube videos my video that I put up last week I need this to be better than it was on my last device, it took me 45 minutes to export and it failed three or four times before I was able to actually get it out. I would like for this export to again be cut in half 
22 minutes would be best case scenario. Anything faster than that, I'll probably do a cartwheel. So moment of truth, this is the only test that I can't give you the files for. I'd have to upload you a terabyte of my footage, which trust me, you do not want. So the format we're gonna be exporting in is an H.264 and we're gonna choose YouTube 4K high quality. It's gonna be an eight gigabyte file and fingers crossed it takes less than 45 minutes. Three, two, one, go. And let's see how it goes. There we go, done. Oh my God, 14 minutes and 46 seconds. Less than 15 minutes for a 27 minute 4K YouTube video. This is exciting. This is what I needed, to be dead honest. All the other tests are gonna be seeing if we can break the machine or where it starts to fall apart, but this is what I needed. Let's move on to the next test. I'm so stoked right now. The next thing we're gonna test out is 6K red camera raw footage. So I wanna make sure there's zero lag on the playback and that it can also handle playback once it's colored, which might be a deal breaker, but we'll find out. Let's import some 6K footage. Again, the 6K footage is down below in the description. So feel free to try this out at home. All right, file is imported. We are going to throw it into a new sequence. And here's the moment of truth, no pre-rendering. Does it play back in full quality? It plays back smooth, baby. Oh my God. 6K raw, no transcoding, no rendering. It's smooth as it could possibly be. Let's throw some color on this bad boy. We'll use the Rec 709 LUT, bring up our exposure, pump our contrast a little bit. Yeah, dude, it still plays it back smooth. 6K raw playback, pass. Our next test is gonna be 8K red raw from the most expensive camera currently on the market, the Red Raptor that's brand new. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-render this one just cause it's an absolute monster. Um, pre-render took five seconds, which wasn't so bad considering this file's the size of a hard drive. Yeah, man, we're getting smooth 8K footage playback. Watching it turn his head, yeah. Wow, so let's add color now to our 8K raw file and see if it can handle that type of playback. So it, it looks like it's taking about 45 seconds to render out the color. Um, so you can test that against your machine at home. We have smooth 8K raw playback. Oh, so I mean, as long as you pre-render these 8K red files, you can edit them on this laptop. That wraps up the video editing test because there's literally no bigger files in the world we could try to use. That's, that's as big as we could actually get. So if we wanna throw a wrench at this computer, there's pretty much nothing more intensive than like 3D rendering and Cinema 4D. So what I have for us first is a 3D rendering benchmark called Cinebench. Again, this link will be in the description so you can run this test right along at home and see what you score. But from the 3D artists that I've spoken to about this, anywhere between three and 5,000 for a laptop is extremely good to get started in 3D modeling. So without further ado, off to the races we go. So this is gonna be a 10 minute test and you can see right here, it is actually rendering a 3D scene. Um, I just think this technology is so freaking cool. I'm not just interested in 3D modeling and Cinema 4D for NFTs, but there's a program called Blender and I've seen creators actually using Blender to create photographs that aren't possible in real life. It takes a long time to learn how to do it, but you can fully design a real 3D scene with ambient lighting and fog and fire and all of these assets and then render it into a photograph that looks like a real life photograph. So if you're a photographer who has not thought about getting into this space, I highly recommend you try it out this year too. We can learn together and hopefully make some progress. So 20 seconds are left in this test, but this little computer has been cranking for like four hours now. It has done all of the tests in this video back to back to back. So I don't know if that slows it down at all, but this computer is putting in the work today. Two seconds left and we'll see how we did. Fingers are crossed. I really want it to be at least 5,000. All right, it's just finishing out the last and final render. Kind of nervous. What do we got? What do we got? 90, wow. 90, 9,668 points, dude. Which means I will be able to do 3D rendering on this laptop with not even, not even a problem. 
I'll be able to like fully dive in to 3D rendering on this laptop. Seriously, download this and try it on your computer and see where you score. Yeah, so freaking huge pass with flying colors for Cinebench. Now we're actually gonna go into Cinema 4D and we are going to render an actual scene that is all lit, so I am stoked now. All right, so Cinema 4D is opening right now. This is the software that I'll be using for all my 3D rendering. And I have another uh, benchmark test for us that will be down in the description that we can just drop it in and render and see how it does. Wow, I, oh wow, look at that. I can even, I can add a camera to it to see where I'll see it from. Anyway, okay, so this is the benchmark file. So if we go over here to the side and it says select this and run benchmark and then click to run benchmark. Again, 750 is passable. We're gonna click benchmark and it says wait 20 seconds. Oh! 1,285, it is th pretty much 1,300. So 3D modeling, Cinema 4D is not gonna be a problem. I'm gonna exit out of this and we are on to our last and final test, an After Effects benchmark test. This program is what we use to create intro titles, advanced uh, visual effects in YouTube videos. Now, if you have never used After Effects in your career, when you start, you are in for a rude awakening. It is an incredible program. If you've never used it, just go ahead and find a basic tutorial and your jaw will hit the floor. All right, oh my God, just, just opening this program gives me extreme anxiety. Um, so this is a very chunky project. Like look at everything that's going on. The render time of my previous machine was five minutes and this one just finished at two minutes and 40 seconds. And now it's playing back so smooth, oh my God. So, we are about to try to export this project, which means it has to build it a frame at a time. This is where computers start struggling. My previous device did it in 15 minutes pre-composition. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the render key. We're gonna go high quality, as high as it is, and we are going to render in three, two, one, render. The timer is going. So, wow, this is no way. When we first started, it said there were two minutes remaining. Now it's up to six minutes because the more assets that come in, the slower the computer goes because the more it has to actually render and process. So I've been recording for hours. So I'm gonna turn off the cameras uh, until this is done and we'll come back and see where we're at. We are now done and that took 10 minutes and four seconds. This laptop's crushed every test we've thrown at it, to be dead honest. If anybody can think of a test that might be more extensive than what I've done, Leave it in the comment. Uh, I'll try it and let you know how it goes. But this laptop is an absolute monster and it's not even fully maxed out spec wise. This is all that I needed actually. And I was concerned I should have gotten the i9. I don't need it. I didn't need it. This is, this, this tackles all the needs that I have. In closing, it might be the Nvidia Studio drivers that like fully optimize the programs that I'm using or the incredible GPU. I mean, the NVIDIA GeForce 3050 Ti, it is a beast of a graphics card to have in a slim laptop. And I've got 32 gigs of RAM in this powerhouse. So, I mean, this thing is an absolute beast. I would have killed to have this thing in high school. Um, but even better, I've got it now. If any of you guys are interested in picking up this laptop for yourself, I will go ahead and put a link in my description as well as all of the stats of how I built mine out in this video. But I wanna encourage you guys to check back in next week for our brand new photography masterclass. I am making a long series on this channel that's dedicated to taking you no matter where you are in your photography journey and helping you get to becoming a paid professional so that you can make a full living and then some with your camera. But as always, I love you guys very much and I will see you next week with a brand new series. Wish us luck. Peace.